Shalom once again, Yalak here. This is Sunday, January 8th, 2017. I told you all Sabbath was yesterday. For the rest of us who are not keeping the laws of the Creator, don't go to church today, which is Sunday, so I hope nobody went. But of course, that's just wishful thinking, like they say. But I want to talk here again about the New Testament is Fake series. This one today... I don't know, maybe I'll call it 40 days. Now, I'm reading here from amazingfacts.org, and it says here, How long did Jesus stay on earth after his resurrection? They're dealing with different Bible questions, I guess. Hear what it says. How long did Jesus stay on earth after his resurrection? We know from the Bible that Jesus ascended 10 days before Pentecost, and that he was crucified before, uh, crucified during the Passover. So, and, and you know, I know there there is a lot of types that they call it in the New Testament, saying this and that is a type of what happened in the Old Testament, or this and that person is just a type of Christ, and so on. So there. Pulling in Jesus being crucified on the Passover, which I accepted from when I was a child, and even coming into this Hebrew knowledge, I accepted that too. But lately, I've just been thinking. I know they're using a type here again, right? Um, from uh, some scriptural type, you know, I guess I don't know what else to call it, right? Saying that his death at uh, Passover time was a type of children of Israel leaving Egypt because of the whole lamb being slain and all that kind of stuff at that time. But I, I've, I've lately, for the past year, I think, been thinking, should he have been crucified using another type, another scriptural type? Like, shouldn't he have more been crucified at uh, the time of, like, you know, later in the year, the time of the atonement, the day of the atonement, because it's it makes more sense to say he's atoning for our sins. So that's the time. See, when Israel was children of Israel was leaving Egypt, it's not like they were paying for sins or making it right with the Most High per se. You see what I'm saying? So scripturally, that Egyptian or Hebrew Exodus from Egypt was not about paying for their sins in order to leave bondage or leave Egypt and so if the Christian minded person is saying salvation and Jesus death is about being free from the bondage of sin church of Israel weren't leaving Egypt by being rescued by the most high because they had finished paying for their sins and now they're being rescued by a lamb that was slain at that Passover time so when one just begins to think carefully about these things but if you think the day of atonement usually just sets the people right away. An atonement is being made to free you or clear up your sin, your debt to the Most High. And so if the Passover is dealing with having some food and a lamb being slain and so on, like, I don't know, I just think it's more fitting if he would have died on the day of atonement, right, for sins. The next problem I have is that if this is some type, him dying at um, around Pentecost slash Passover time, it still seems a little bit odd because where 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 is the quote unquote sinner going? Well, you know because when the Lamb was slain, Israel left Egypt, right? So I guess well the Christian minded person would say well we're leaving sin, but the fact is Christians are still sinning. So when when your sin as Israel, as a children of Israel, if I can play with the words like that, because I'm trying to mesh and gel it with the Christian westernized thinking, when the sin or the bondage of Egypt is left or the grasp of the Pharaoh is left by that deliverance slash exodus, they are not 
held by the same bondage anymore. They are not in the grasp of the Pharaoh anymore. They don't have to deal with the Pharaoh anymore because the scripture says the Egyptians that you see here, you will see them again no more. So they're, they're not doing anything anymore with that Pharaoh, right? And with Egypt in terms of being under their power anymore. They're, they're free now. But we find that Christians say, well, Jesus death is about freeing us from sin, the bondage of sin. Well, while we know there are no scriptures that says to the Christian in the New Testament, this sin or this bondage of Satan, you will see it no more, or you will see Satan working in your life no more, or see Satan tempting you no more. And so we see that Christians are still under the bondage of sin because Christians still sin. They don't understand the law, so they're still transgressing by not keeping the Sabbath and so on and so forth, right? The next thing is that they do all kinds of things, right? That's just really offending the, the creator and going against what the scripture says. So it just doesn't make sense to me. It would seem better if the Christian says he died at the day of atonement so that we're atoning for our sins, right? As opposed to Passover, because Christians aren't passing over from a land of bondage to freedom. Right? But let's go on here. We know from the Bible that Jesus ascended 10 days before Pentecost and that he was crucified during the Passover. So that would mean he was on earth approximately 40 days before his ascension. And here again is another scriptural type. 40 days. I guess they're probably talking about what I've heard from a child in the Christian church saying the 40 days is about um, Israel you know, going through 40 days in the wilderness, um, 40 years, excuse me. So that's probably, I'm guessing, because they stopped right here, and I've forgotten more and more over the years now of the Christian teachings. So that's probably what they're trying to say. The 40 days is about the 40 years in the wilderness that Israel spent after they left Egypt. Now, the problem with that is, if he spent 40, approximately 40 days before his ascension, well, first of all, I mean, okay, approximately, okay, let me leave that alone. But 40 days before his ascension, uh, so 40 days after resurrection, and then he left and went up to heaven, they say. Here's my question that I want you to think about. For all of you who believe this, whether you're Hebrew-minded or Christian-minded. The Church of Israel spent 40 years from which this story of Jesus' resurrection and ascension is borrowed and mirrored. They spent this 40 years in the wilderness and then they went into the land of Canaan. They went into a place that they could settle and live and conquer. So they conquered some more enemies because the Most High had basically destroyed the Egyptian empire for them to leave. So, and then they went after 40 years into this new place. Where did the Christian go after 40 days? Because you told me when I went to Bible college in the Christian church, and you told me in the Christian church from as a child coming up anyway, that the Christians, even though I, I showed you already that I don't believe it was the Christians who this happened to, it was the Hebrews, but you told me that the Christians were fed to lions and tortured and so on. But after, so if Jesus died and then he freed you, which is a type of the Exodus, then, since the children of Israel, after the Exodus, went into the wilderness for 40 years and then went into a land of promise, the land of Canaan, big fruits, grapes, or whatever, then if the Christian left sin because Jesus died as the Passover lamb, and then after 40 days, he went up to heaven, shouldn't the Christian enter into a time of freedom with their religion or relationship with Jesus? And enjoy that freedom. Okay, maybe they don't have a land to go to because they're not like a physical nation. So, okay, I'll give you that. 
But still, since the children of Israel enjoyed the benefits of being in a land that they call their own, that the Most High was giving them, then the Christian should at least not have any persecution. At least give them some freedom and some time to enjoy the freedom from the bondage of sin that Jesus freed them from. So after 40 days when he ascended, if Christians are free, they should not be suffering persecution and torture from the Romans by lions and, and so on, right? And in arenas and uh, being burned by fire and thrust through with spears and killed and hunted and so on, right? Because when the children of Israel came out of their 40 years, they weren't suffering that. They were they were on the war path of victory from the Most High who was dispelling the Canaanites for their wickedness on the earth. And so the Most High gave them victory after victory so they could move on to enjoying the victory and the blessing of being delivered from the bondage of Egypt. So if Christians are now supposed to enjoy the victory from the bondage of sin from Satan tempting them after their 40 days with Jesus and they start spreading the gospel, why weren't they enjoying the blessing of all that victory from sin? Instead, after the 40 days, instead they are fleeing the Romans, being tortured and persecuted. You see that? So they make a type of the 40 days. They make a type of Jonah's three days. Son of man will be in the belly of the earth three days. They make a type of all kinds of things. But it does not follow through when one really thinks about it. See, I tell you, think. Think. Right? So 40 days doesn't make sense. It's not even a complete type. It's an incomplete scriptural type. Because when you push the rest of it through and see how the 40 years led the church of Israel to a time of blessing and victory by defeating the Canaanites to enjoy the victory that they got from leaving the Egyptians, then the, the, the Christians should enjoy a victory after their 40 days with Jesus' power coming into them and the day of Pentecost outpouring and all. They should enjoy the victory over the Roman Empire that was torturing them. But right away, there was no power of deliverance from that. They had to run, they had to flee. Think. You cannot have a type that says a lamb was slain at Passover time and the children of Israel went into freedom and used that as a type to say this is how it all went down in the New Testament with Jesus, the Son of God, as the Messiah, Savior, and then found out that after he died to give you that freedom, you are not free. Was a Christian free when they were being thrust through with a spear by the Romans or a sword? Was a Christian free when the child has to watch or the husband has to watch his wife being pushed into an arena or her, the, the wife has to watch her husband being pushed into an arena to stand and fight off or run from a lion. Where's the Christian free in this typology? So to wrap it up, what we find is that after the Passover lamb and the deliverance from the Exodus and uh, the 40 years in Egypt, blessings came to Israel. But that typology of being put over into the New Testament to make the New Testament appear credible and from God, we find that a so-called Passover lamb being slain, named Jesus, so they named their animals their lambs, like people name their animals today, I guess, and then you get that um, crucifixion and uh, resurrection in the 40 days, and then the Christians, however, seem to lose their freedom because right away instead of enjoying the blessing that freedom from sin gives freedom from satan's clutches gives like the israelites had freedom from the pharaoh's clutches because you see you got to think of this pharaoh's clutch was to hold them in bondage well if the christian is being freed from pharaoh or excuse me freed from sin from satan why is satan ruling the romans to torture the christians and the christians have no freedom from that if the typology is that Israel had freedom from the Pharaoh.